only one will come out on top. Only one will raise their cup high. The choice is yours. Drink up, fans. The battle for Bean Street is on. Look for the special UNC, NC State, and Duke coffee cups at Kangaroo Express. The school with the most number of cups sold wins $20,000 for the charity of their choice. You know, we're thinking about you down here in Tallahassee, Florida. Um, I did three tours in Iraq with the Marine Corps. And, uh, yeah, we're thinking about you and praying about you every day. And just come home safe. Real Tactics are presented by Lucky Craft, makers of the Joe Thomas Signature Series, available exclusively at Dick's Sporting Goods. The last couple weeks we've talked about fish care and some of the techniques I use to keep your fish alive once they're in the live well. So what do you do if you land a bass and for whatever reason, whether he's hooked deep or his gills are just damaged, but he's bleeding profusely? You've got to do something because if not, they can go into shock and die in the live well just like that. Now, this guy right here, He's been beyond help for several years, but he's perfect for demonstrating what I do when I bring a fish on board and he's bleeding from the gullet or the gills. Anytime that happens, what I do immediately is I go to my cooler. What do you get out of your cooler? I know, you're not gonna believe it. A can of Sprite, sugared Sprite. I immediately hold the fish out, pop the top, and I flush the fish's gills and gullet with a full 12 ounce can of Sprite. Now there's a lot of people that have different opinions on why this works because it is proven that it does work. A lot of people think it's the citrus and the carbonation. I personally believe it's the sugar and the carbonation but regardless it coagulates the wound and it will immediately stop the bleeding so you can put the fish in the live well, they won't go into shock and their chance of survival quadruples. Hi I'm Casey Kane, driver of the number four Red Bull Toyota. I'm really excited to have Kangaroo Express and KESalute.com riding on both the 83 car and the 4 car for the Daytona July race. Through their Salute Our Troops campaign, Kangaroo Express is working to raise $1 million this summer for the USO while recognizing hometown military heroes all across the southeast. For more details and to share your story, check out KESalute.com or just stop by a Kangaroo Express store. Hello race fans and welcome to Goodyear's more driven performance of the week as we head to the road course in Northern California. It's Infineon in Sonoma and it's that man, Kurt Busch, looking for his first ever road course win. Driver of the 22 out front early and often, crew chief Steve Addington. He's won on road courses before with Kurt's brother Kyle and their strategy was right on the money. They made the final pit stop on lap 77 right before the caution flag came out. Pretty fortuitous for Kurt Busch. He took the lead and his restarts were strong all day long. Going up the hill with Dodge Power to Spare, he led 75 of 110 laps at Infineon. And he takes the checkered flag to earn his first road course win ever, the first victory for the 22 team in the year 2011. Kurt Busch in the chase, and now he's got that all-important win. Afterwards at Sonoma, he does his trademark Polish victory lap, where he ran the entire road course backwards, waving the checkered flag, then he spilled Coca-Cola all over everybody. Kurt Busch, Goodyear, salutes you. Hi, I'm Brian Vickers, the driver of the number 83 Toyota. I'm really excited to have Kangaroo Express and KESalute.com riding on the number 83 and the number 4 car for the July 2nd Daytona race. Through their Salute the Troops campaign, Kangaroo Express is looking to raise $1 million for the USO while recognizing hometown heroes all across the Southeast. Some of my family have been in the military and I'm you know, honored to say that and very grateful for their service. Uh, my grandfather and his two brothers uh, we're all in World War II, and uh, I personally have some friends that um, have served in the military and still currently serve in the military. And um, you know, I can't tell you how much it means to me and how grateful I am for, for their service, um, what they've done for this country, and how proud I am of them. Thank all the troops for, for everything they've done, um, you know, and, and how much we appreciate their service because it really, it really is what makes all of this happen. And, What's, what allows us to be here and the fans to be here and enjoy a uh, beautiful Sunday race without any worry. For more details and to share your story, check out KESalute.com or stop by a Kangaroo Express store. It isn't just a tasty cup of Bean Street coffee. It's a show of pride. When the time comes to show your true colors, what are you going to do?
Drink up, fans. The battle for Bean Street is on. Look for the special UNC, NC State, and Duke coffee cups at Kangaroo Express. The school with the most number of cups sold wins $20,000 for the charity of their choice. Hi, Trix. I'm Tracy. And I'm Tanya. And I'm saying a big thank you from Charleston. And I'm saying a big thank you from Atlanta, Georgia. Thank you for all you do for us. We hope that you have a safe trip home. And thank you for so much for all that you do. We love y'all. Come back safe. This gentleman, Kevin Roland, is in the lead right now with a 91. He is the winner of the Fist World Cup Freestyle World Championships in Iniwashiro, Japan last year. And that was just a precursor to what we hope to see in the Olympics in 2014, this very event, and hopefully this young man. His first hit, hell, hell his whole run is super impressive. Check this out, Jeff Frenchman. There it is, the double again, matching transition perfectly. So big, love the flat spin too. Carrying a ton of speed through that. To the switch, 720 now. Whoa, another double on the opposite wall. Oh. Into the double, 1260, oh. Kevin oh. Roland. The best pipe run I have ever seen by a skier, right there. And absolutely stunning the crowd. The judges have their work cut out for them now. We have just set another record, folks. Although only five hits, three of them were doubles. The first time ever done in competition history, skiers or snowboarders. Hey guys, just want to tell you, uh, y'all doing a fantastic job. My name's uh, BM1 Jason Christopher, United States Navy. This is HMC Doc Danielwicks. And we want to just tell you, we just got back from that sandbox. We know how you feel. Wish you guys were here. Love everything you're doing. We know how you feel. Uh, wish you were here watching the race with us today. But uh, God bless you. Take care. And boogity, 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 boys. Love you guys. Take care. Let's talk about things like keeping the rod tip down when you're working the bait and the cadence you're doing. Do you do a one, two, three pause or? You know, I probably throw a jerk bait a little different than a lot of people do. I mean, you got to let the fish tell you what they want. I mean, probably most of the time I hit the bait three times and let it set. I hit it three times again and let it set. You know, occasionally you got to mix it up and just put one or two pops in it. But the big thing, like you said, is you do want to keep your rod down when you're throwing a mixed stick. The thing about it, if you hold your rod up here, Every time you jerk it, you're making that bait come up. You want to keep that bait down and digging a little bit deeper each time you hit it. So you do want to keep your rod down. And you know, the other thing, and these smallmouth hit so hard, it's not, it's hard to do. But when a fish bites a stick bait, you really don't want to set the hook hard. It's just these smallmouth hit it so hard, it's just kind of a natural reaction to, to go reeling, after right. them. You just basically want to start reeling. Those, uh, you know, them number five gamakatsu hooks are going to, going to put it to them. So, uh, you know, keep your rod tip down, you know, pop it two or three times, let it set. And, you know, that's the big thing is figuring out how long you have to let it set before the fish actually has time to get it or how fast they want you hitting it and how fast they want it moving, you know, before you figure out what they want. And remember, the colder the water, the longer you need to pause it, right, Mike? That's no, that, there's no doubt about that. I mean, when the water's below 50 degrees especially, you need to let that bait sit there for three to five seconds every time you stop it. When the water's good and warm and these fish are really feeding hard, you can just keep it coming all the time and they'll come up and take it away from you. But like you said, the colder the water, let it set longer. <laughs> 